This is a fortune cookie. When you look at it, you think of Chinese food. But what if I told you it's not even Chinese? This is me. Growing up as a Chinese American surrounded by white folks, I was always ashamed of my culture. I felt different to my surroundings. No one's home looked, smelled, or sounded like mine. And I felt weird, but I should have felt proud. This is my journey, trying to find what I ran away from. They are, they are one of my uh, my uh, my tour guide my my people. They come to Wisconsin. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I know Frank. He, he was my neighbor for the last five years before we went back to China. I know you do. Hey. Smile with documentary the, Hi. the cookie shop. <laughs> oh, cookie shop? Oh, what are you doing uh, right here? Where, where's the cookie? No, he's just interview. <laughs> so we'll see you guys later. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, I mean, I guess for me, like, part of taking on this project was because I wanted to get more in touch with my tradition and, like, my roots. As you get older, you want to learn about your roots. So I went back, everybody was speaking Mandarin. Uh, uh, when they were speaking Cantonese, I, I, I came back out with the mother tongue. Yeah. And these people spoke to me in their mother tongue and said, Oh, you are one of us. And I said, Yeah, I am. I love these people. I love these people. I love these people. Why? They see us so beautiful, so beautiful, so beautiful. How does Kevin like his coffees? Oh yeah, <laughs> morning breakfast. I need to wake up. My mom actually wake up at 6.30 just to heat up the machine and get the machine going so you can, everybody can come see how it makes. An hour to an hour and a half to machine to get ready. Wow. So, um, it's quite, quite a uh, uh, handmade operation. Yeah. Tell me about Kevin himself, how did you get into the business? I'm here since well, when I was nine years old. My mom and my uncle is the founder of the Golden Gate Fortune Cookie. And my uncle passed away now. It's my mom's controlling. I'm just helping. Before, I don't like to do it. No? <laughs> no. Why? Because it's a boring job and it's hot. Yeah. When it's hot, it's hot. When it's cold, it's cold. And you don't want to stay there when it's hot. It's terrible. Yeah. Oh, quite hard. It's a way to communicate. It's a way to um, to pass on information. That's a way to uh, to understand each other's the cultures. Do you think it whitewashes the culture at all? No, no, I don't think so. Starting this documentary, I thought it'll be simple. The fortune cookie is obviously a symbol of assimilation. But after talking to several people, I didn't find the cookie cutter answer I was looking for. What does the fortune cookie represent to you? Uh, basically, it's a fad. So if you go to China, you go to Hong Kong, ask for a fortune cookie, and end of your meal, I say, like, what the heck is that? 
Yeah, but, but then when you go to any Chinese restaurant all over America, everybody looks forward to the fortune cookie after at the end of the meal. And he's really not making you know, making that much money off of it by the time he pays expenses. Right. So you can say he's buying a job. <laughs> but it, I don't know. I mean, in some sense it does, right? Because now like, people come to this place and give uh, Chinese people businesses, right? And they have jobs and stuff. What do you think? I don't know. Like, oh, you should be thankful that you got like a job. It's like kind of, can I curse? Is that okay? It's kind of fucked. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I'm, I was wondering, like, do you think that the fortune cookie is almost uh, a way to make Chinese culture a little more easier to digest for Americans? I think so, because yeah, all, all the the Chinese foods uh, were very catered to the Americans, right? And so this is just another one of those things that was catering to that. That's interesting. The fortune cookie wasn't just a symbol of assimilation, but also a symbol of survival and opportunity. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, so it was that kind of uh, that kind of game. Everything was a game. Or well, you can say everything was an opportunity. So you can say, you know, Kevin's fortune cookie is an opportunity for them to make money. That's interesting because I always felt like maybe just because I'm, you know, I'm a college student, I'm at a pretty progressive school, that I've always looked at it from like a perspective of like uh, whitewashing Chinese culture. But honestly, the more I hear people talk about it, it's, it was never about that. It was just a way to survive, a yeah. way to make money. Oh yeah, because uh, they said that the Chinese did whatever it took to survive. This kind of loss of tradition and fuzziness of tradition, do you think this is due to the assimilation of our culture? Correct. And basically, the next generation, they don't really care. They said, I wasn't born in China. I said, why should, why should I keep up with this uh, tradition? It means nothing to me. <laughs> well, do you think that it's a shame that um, some... It some is, but then you can remember the younger generation right now, they, they're having it tough because yeah, you know, just try, trying to survive here in the Bay Area. See, I've written on that one. See that? Yeah. What does that mean? I don't know. What? What do you mean you don't know? Did you write it? Yeah. And um, <laughs> it's about the life, about the cookie, about me, and about our life. Okay. So you gotta gotta go with the flow. <laughs> and there's nothing you do about it. You cannot keep tradition. You're never gonna have 100% of anything anymore. Because the culture has changed, and you know, it will revolve, you know, evolve. So I end my journey without a clear answer, but I learn to be proud of the culture I once tried to run away from. <laughs>